Did you know that most onshore wind turbines can produce over 6 million kilowatt hours of electricity every year? That's enough to keep an average of 1500 households running. Whether it's using electricity to charge our mobile phones, binge watch series, or do other equally important stuff like warming up a microwave dinner. Basically, we owe a lot to the wind. And these giant mechanical blades that harness energy from the wind to generate electricity enable us to do things like switch on a light at night so that we don't trip over the dog. The wind turbines with the huge blades are no doubt the ones we're all most familiar with. These are called horizontal axis wind turbines, or HORT for short. But lesser known and showing enormous potential is other special type of wind turbine that's been taking shape in northern parts of the world and could arguably be even more efficient than the horizontal axis wind turbines that we all know and love. You're watching Strictly Engineered. Before we delve any deeper into this innovation, let's go over the benefits of using wind to generate electricity. As we all know, wind power is a clean and renewable energy source. It doesn't pollute the earth and it's inexhaustible. It also reduces the use of fossil fuels as well as energy imports, not to mention creating local employment and wealth. Pretty much all of the wind turbines that we see dotted around these days are horts, whether they're offshore or onshore. This means that the center of the rotor and the shaft that it rotates is horizontal, making it parallel with the direction of the wind. Now the vertical axis wind turbines, or VORTs, flip that on its side, quite literally, with the main rotor shaft ranged vertically so that it's perpendicular to the direction of the wind. A major advantage of this arrangement is that the turbine doesn't need to be pointed into the wind to be effective as VORTs can utilize winds from varying directions. With the vertical axis, both the generator and gearbox can be located closer to the ground at the base of the turbine, making it more accessible for maintenance and repairs, as opposed to climbing all the way to the top of a hort. With the weight at the bottom, the entire structure is also much more well balanced. There are a lot of different types of vertical axis wind turbines, but they all fit into two broad categories, either the drag type or lift type. Fancier names are the Savonius type and the Darius type. The lift type uses the lift aerodynamic force in order to generate energy. With the flow surrounding the structure, the wind then creates a suction on the front of the turbine and the resultant airflow forms a positive angle of attack to the wings, driving them to rotate. Because of the design and shape of the wings, there is less drag experienced compared to the Savonius type wind turbines. Once rotation starts, Darius types are able to accelerate faster than the speed of the wind. The drag type relies on a flow-resistant mechanism to get their rotors moving. To put it simply, the dynamic pressure of the wind against the blades forces the rotor to rotate. All the while, on the opposite side of the blades, there is a force of aerodynamic resistance. In other words, drag. They go with the wind on one side and against the wind on the other, making it slower but with high torque. Both horizontal axis and vertical axis come with their pros and cons including levels of efficiency and complexity, but it's the vertical axis that acts as the precursor for the disruptive innovation that has potential to revolutionize the wind power industry. Horizontal axis wind turbines are deemed much more efficient because of their size, ability to produce kinetic energy due to their vast swept area as well as their positioning. The use of wind is much more effective when wind turbines are placed offshore, but as we've discussed, the offshore hordes have all heavy components located at the top of the structure, and their foundation is a heavy platform located at their base. Norway-based firm Worldwide Wind is developing a new type of floating vort, which is an amalgamation of all the factors that make both the horts and the vorts so great. It's called the contra-rotating vertical turbine, which could radically improve yield as well as reduce the cost of energy for the current approach of floating offshore objects. Worldwide Wind promises more than double the output of the world's biggest turbines. Sounds good, doesn't it? But how do they work? Well, the clue is in the name. This new floating structure features two sets of vertical axis wind turbines that, you guessed it, counter-rotate. Like we've said, the best place for wind turbines to be positioned is in the sea, but the deeper the sea gets, the less sense it makes for the hordes to be located there. More expensive, harder to maintain, etc. Vertical axis, as we know, have all their components located at the bottom of the structure, and it's no different with the contra-rotating vertical wind turbine, which has been made specifically for offshore deployment and to be used on a massive scale. Unlike the three-blade horts you see poking up out of the sea, 
The new contra-rotating turbine is not designed to remain sitting perfectly upright, but instead to move with the wind. Worldwide Wind have designed these turbines to hold their own weight up, placing a float partway up its shaft, allowing the turbine to balance as opposed to fighting to stay upright. A lower center of gravity means that the design is much more stable compared to the conventional horizontal axis wind turbines. The blades of the contra-rotating wind turbine sweep up into a cone, which helps to reduce the downstream turbulent wake of each floating tower. Reduced turbulent weight means increased number of towers on a given path of ocean, which is a typical advantage of Vorts, as well as less turbulence, meaning they are perfect for deep waters. Now to the most important aspect, which is the power output. The world's largest wind turbine as it stands is the ginormous Mingyang Smart Energy 16242, standing at 264 meters tall. Falling just shy of the Eiffel Tower has a rated capacity of 16 megawatts. If you think that's big, then Worldwide Wind is going to blow that right out of the water. The Norwegian-based company claims that they can easily surpass that amount, with plans to grow their turbines up to 400 meters in height, offering a whopping capacity to produce 40 megawatts per unit. The company is currently working on producing more floating turbines through rapid prototyping, aiming to have a 3 megawatt model up and running by 2026, with the 40 megawatt machines to be ready by as soon as 2029. On top of all that, this new floating design by Worldwide Wind will also have less of an environmental impact than the ones we're more familiar with today. Birds everywhere can breathe a sigh of relief due to the reduced level of threat that they'll face as well as a decreased level of noise that the new designs produce due to their lower blade tip speeds. With all these advantages, of course there comes the disadvantages, or at least reasons for concern. Longevity with these new designs will vary as with all vertical axis wind turbines, the blades receive the brunt of the wind, coming from all angles, not to mention trying to replace the huge bearings needed to support and spin a 400 meter long shaft inside a 400 meter long tube that is counter-rotating. That could be a big, big challenge.